Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the signs of the north, the city of our great king. I am delighted, excited, blessed, and impressed to share with you my heavenly father's children once again. I'm Bishop Michael Rogers, senior pastor here at Kingdom Cathedral, welcoming you to the joy of the Lord and this wonderful cyber celebration, thanking God for another day he has kept us. Well, let me share with you emphatically, has God got a word for you? And I ask that you would prayerfully consider in the kingdom's constitution, your holy Bibles. The word of God is found in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number four, and we'll commence reading at verse number six. Again, that is 2 Timothy, chapter four, verse number six. Here beginneth the reading of the Holy Scripture. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And so far the scripture, the grass withereth and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God will stand forever. For the moments that remain, I'd like to reason with you from this subject. Keep the faith. Praise God. That's right. Encourage yourself. Keep the faith. Well, those of us who watch sporting events, the likes of the Masters, the NBA Finals, the Super Bowl, the Stanley Cup, Wimbledon, boxing, so on and so forth. Note that usually at the end of the game or the match or the bout, there is a post-game interview. They say things like, this was our day. Uh, all pistons were firing all cylinders clicking. And they say things like we just outmatched our opponent. And usually in that winner's circle or in the end zone or on the other side of the court, you'll hear them talking. And the truth is you don't know how far you've advanced until you look back at where you've come from. And so it is. Here we are, uh, allowing ourselves the privilege today of listening to Paul's post-game interview. He's, so to speak, in the end zone. The race is about over. The labels of the empire appear on his luggage. For he has preached in Lystra and Iconium. Uh, he has preached in Pisidian Antioch. 
He has shared the gospel with the Corinthians. He has preached in Thessalonica and Berea. He's been let down a wall in a basket. He's been run out of town by his own kinfolk. He is beaten with 40 lashes save one five times. He has spent, as the record records, a day and a night in the bosom of the deep. He has been naked. He has been hungry. He's been stoned. He's been in peril by the sword. And Paul now comes to this post-game interview. His life is about over. He's in a Roman prison uh, with Nero's chopping block being fine-tuned to perfection. He's looking out of the window, no doubt, and can see uh, the blade being sharpened to take his life. So finally, he gets an opportunity uh, to get off a letter uh, to his understudy, Timothy. And he tells him that the day is coming where they won't even put up with sound doctrine. They will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. He goes on to tell him, but do the work of an evangelist. Endure hardness as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove and rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine. He says, try to get to me uh, as soon as you can. Try to get here before winter. He says, stop in Troas and, and get my books, and get my parchments. He goes on to share, for Demas has forsaken me, uh, having loved this present world more than the world to come. He says, while you're doing that, stop and bring John Mark with you, for he is profitable to my ministry. He says, but if I'm not here when you arrive, oh my God, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. He says, and henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me at that day. And not me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. My God, I just want you for a moment or so to look at the text with me. Uh, let's look at verse uh, number six, he, he says, For I am now ready, O oh my, to be offered. It's scary because it's almost the identical words he says when he first arrives in Rome. He declares, I am now ready to preach the gospel to them that are in Rome. Uh -huh. He talks about the fact that uh, uh, he was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Notice what he says, I am now ready. He is not equivocating, he's ready. 
He's not uh, vacillating. He's ready. He's not hesitating, but he's ready. He's not diffident. He's ready. He's not cowering in a corner, but he is ready. I am now ready. He, he speaks in the present perfect tense. In essence, uh, Paul says that um, not only uh, am I ready, but I am already ready. In essence, uh, Paul looks at what is happening or about to happen to him, and he speaks as though it has already happened. He says, I'm ready to be offered up. He speaks of himself as being uh, a drink offering poured out. You follow what I'm saying? And so he says, I am ready. I am ready to be poured out. I'm trying to tell you, Paul was so ready, he counted himself having already accomplished what was about to happen to him. He is not saying that I am going to die. Paul is thinking, I'm already dead. You remember him saying on another occasion, I die daily. I am crucified with Christ. Uh-huh, not I. Uh, no longer do I live, but uh, Christ lives in me. Notice this, if you will. Uh, he uh, begins to speak with such confidence. Uh, he recognizes, yes, I I am a prisoner in Rome, but I am not Rome's prisoner. I am the prisoner of the Lord. His perspective changes. It's amazing because what he sees before him is not execution, but elevation. He says, for me to live is Christ and to die his gain. I wish I had somebody that understood what it meant, praise God, to have the kind of mentality Paul had to consider himself already dead. I'm trying to tell you, uh, you can't harm somebody. Lord, help me to preach this. You can't kill somebody that's already dead. You can't Criticize. It won't have any effect on them. I need somebody right now listening to me. Although you have been quickened, although you are alive, you are to reckon yourself, praise God, to be dead to trespasses and sins. And as a result, whatever happens to you, whatever people do to you, whatever people say, to you has no bearing or effect on you negatively because you are dead to criticism and dead as it were to those things that the enemy would put upon you. I hear him saying, I am ready. My God, would to God those of us would prepare ourselves for our future. It's all right to be in the moment, but sometimes you've got to look past the present and notice that the future holds greatness for you, for it doth not yet appear, my God, what we shall be. But when we shall see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And so it is, I hear him say, in his state of readiness, he now begins to shift the paradigm of his situation and now begins to recapitulate what has already taken place. And he begins to speak, praise God, with resolve. I hear him say now here in verse number seven, I have fought a good fight. Thank you, Jesus. Can I stop parenthetically to share with somebody, praise God, that this way of holiness, uh, this way of Christianity is not a playground. It's 
a battlefield. Oh, can I talk to you here? Too many of us, praise God, are having uh, the wrong perspective. You didn't read uh, the fine print, as it were. You're thinking to yourself that you're going to glory on a flowery bed of ease. But I share with you, any man the Lord said that would come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me daily. I need somebody to understand here that as, as it were, soldiers, praise God, in the army of the Lord, you don't fight till you get tired. You fight until you die. Understand this. Uh, the Bible shares in the name of the Lord that we are to be faithful. Uh, many of you get it wrong. The Bible does not say that you're to be faithful until death. It accurately says you are to be faithful unto death, suggesting to us many times that your faithfulness to God will be the very thing that could cause your surmise. So you're not waiting until you die. You are remaining faithful to God no matter what comes your way. Can I preach like I feel? I want you to know, praise God, we are not just members of the body of Christ, but I can hear the old, old saints of God, the old souls, my God, they would sing songs like we are soldiers in the army. We've got to fight Although we have to cry, we've got to hold up the bloodstained banner and we got to hold it up how long until we die. Oh, I want somebody to know, praise God, where you are. Yes, I can hear them sing. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord and I promised him that I would serve him until I die. We, praise God, care too much about this life. But if in this life alone you have hope, you are of all men most miserable. But somebody ought to be praising God that your hope is beyond the grave. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. I want you to know you got to fight Till the finish, it's a fight to the death. And you've got to be able, praise God, to know that in your fighting, you're not fighting alone. That the Holy Spirit is the guiding force. And that's what gives you the victory. Because God, praise God, in you is the hope of glory. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want you to know, praise God, uh, that this Christian warfare that we're on will lead you not only to warfare, praise God, but to an encounter with the enemy. I come to tell somebody here, praise God, you cannot avoid or evade whatever the enemy's tactics are. Praise God, we are not ignorant of the enemy's devices, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, praise God, and powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, praise God, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost, my God, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, praise God, fight, my God, until the devil knows he's picked on the wrong person. Fight until all of the imps and demons trying, praise God, to invade your household know, praise God, that there's God in your house. Fight until, praise God, the enemy knows, amen, he can mess with your finances if he wants to, but you have decreed and declared, hallelujah, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, the Lord is my my shepherd and I shall not want. I want you to know, praise God, praise God, your warfare, once it's been accomplished, will lead you 
to a walk. I hear him say, praise God, I am ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. Praise God, I fought a good fight. Then he says, I have finished, oh God help me now, my course. Hallelujah. In essence, he is now saying, I've completed the assignment. Praise the Lord. I thank God for Paul's testimony. He says, what was delivered to me, I deliver it to you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. He says, now I know what I had to do. Praise God, and I did it. Praise the Lord. Whether it cost me great pain, whether it cost me uncomfortability, it was important that I finish for he that putteth his hand to the plow and looketh back is not fit for the kingdom of God. You can't be shaky. You can't be, as it were, one who vacillates back and forth. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Praise God, you've got to make up in your mind, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back. I want someone to know today, you got to finish what you started. I want you to know, and more than you putting your hands on it, praise God, let God in you, praise God, finish what has begun. For he is the author, and he is the finisher of our faith. I need to tell somebody here, praise God, you move from warfare into your walk, and then finally from your walk into the word. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And lastly, I have kept the faith. Oh my God. This is where I want to park parenthetically for a little while and tell you, praise God, wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever you have, have all been obtained by faith. For with out faith it is impossible to please God. He that cometh unto God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Strong persuasion is the definition of faith from the Greek pistis and I come to tell somebody you look the devil in his face. Praise God don't you flinch and don't you dare draw back but say with confidence I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he's able to keep that that I've committed unto him against that day. I need somebody here, praise God, that will glorify God with me. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can't keep the faith until you finish your course. Can I say it again? You can't keep the faith until you finish your course. Look at your Lord and your Savior. My God, by the Bible says he stood before Herod and praised God and then stood before Pilate. He's led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep to his sheriffs, he opens not his mouth. And then finally Pilate says to him, do you know who I am? Uh-huh, do you know I could take your life? And this is the first time out of the whole interrogation we ever hear Jesus say anything. And I can see the Lord clearing his throat. <clears throat> Wait a minute here. Huh? Let me set the record straight. No man taketh my life. Hallelujah. I lay it down and I got power to pick it up again. And I stopped by here to tell you he went from judgment hall to judgment hall they ridiculed him they plucked out his beard they blindfolded him and hit him and asked him who hit you my god and then finally he's whipped with a cat of nine tails iron mixed with leather my god leather mixed with steel and it tears into his flesh ah you would think it would be enough now he takes
takes, as it were, a cross that is on his back and walks up Golgotha Hill. Yes, to the mount called Calvary. There he has huge iron spikes driven through his hands and driven through his feet. That would be enough for anybody to die instantly, but he would not die die. You hear what I'm telling you? They now take a spear and they thrust it into his side and out of his side comes blood and water and you would think that would be it but he would not die. There is a thief on one side of him who is dying in sin. There's a thief on the other side of him who is dying uh -huh, from sin. Uh, and then there is the Lord in the middle uh, who is dying for sin. Uh, and I could hear him telling uh, uh -huh, that one who wants to die from sin, uh, today you will be with me in paradise. Uh, he stops dying long enough uh, to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Uh, he begins to declare, I thirst. Uh -huh, but then finally, uh, once he notices uh, that the work of salvation uh, has been completed, uh, he opens his mouth uh, and declares, it uh, is finished. Uh, and isn't that powerful? Uh, he doesn't say, I uh, am finished. Uh, Y'all better hear me today. Uh, because he ain't finished yet. Uh, he's going to die. Uh, uh, but on the third day, uh, you'll see he ain't finished yet. Uh, he says, I'm not finished. Uh, but it is finished. Uh, for this cause uh, came I into the world. Uh, my God and for uh, this purpose. Uh, hallelujah was I born. Uh, I come to tell you here. Uh, whence you have finished the course. Uh, that's when you keep the faith. Uh, you understand now. Uh, I've been through enough. Uh, so that nothing shakes me. Uh, nothing moves me. Uh, you look at life's woes. And decree and declare this is just another thing for God to be glorified in. I got to quit here, but I want to tell somebody keep the faith. These are times where the enemy wants to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. But if your faith is anchored in the Lord, you understand that. Faith calls things that are not uh, as though they were. Uh, your faith will help you uh, to overcome uh, every obstacle in life. Uh, I'm preaching to somebody uh, who the enemy is told. Uh, throw in the towel. Uh, the devil is a liar. Uh, have faith in God. Uh, for those who have faith, uh, the signs of a mustard seed uh, can say to yonder's mountain, uh, be thou removed, uh, be carried uh, into the midst of the sea. Uh, and if you shall not doubt uh, in your heart, uh, but believe uh, that you have received, uh, you shall have uh, whatsoever you say. Uh, I got to quit here, uh, but I'm telling somebody, uh, on today, whatever you do, keep the faith. Do you hear me? These are trying times. It's going to take faith to get through this season. It's going to take faith to get through this virus. It's going to take faith to get through these economic times of declension. But I want you to know that's right up our alley for the just uh, shall live uh, by faith uh, and this is uh, the victory uh, that overcometh the world uh, even our faith uh, is going to take faith uh, to know uh, that if this earthly house uh, of this tabernacle uh, shall be dissolved uh, we got another building uh, not made with hands uh, somebody tell him yes Lord uh, I need you right now 
now to praise God for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. The devil is a liar. He's trying to unravel your faith with harsh circumstances. We're going through more in these past nine months than some of us have gone through in the past nine years. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. I need somebody to get your faith stirred up again. Yes, get your faith fired up again and shout. I believe God uh, that's going to be your passport uh, to any situation uh, that you encounter. Uh, what are you going to do uh, with the doctor's diagnosis? Uh, I believe God. Uh, what are you going to do uh, in between jobs? Uh, I believe God. Uh, what are you going to do uh, with that relationship uh, that's on the rocks? Uh, I believe God. Uh, Yes, I believe he'll do what he says. Just trust and obey. There's no other way. Say it again. I believe. I believe God. I got to finish here. But keep the faith. We got some days ahead of us that might be troublesome. But faith will get you out of whatever fate get you into. In fact, I don't even subscribe to fate. That's what the world says. They are fatalists. But I believe that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and God wouldn't send it unless he made a way of escape for there is no temptation such as is common to man that God is able with that same temptation to make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. Keep the faith. The sun will come out tomorrow. Keep Keep the faith, ha, waiting ha, may endure for a night, ha, but joy ha, will come in the morning. Ha, I feel like preaching here. Ha, I gotta quit. Ha, I'm telling somebody, ha, hold on ha, to God's unchanging hand. Ha, time is filled ha, with swift transition. Ha, before you can get over one thing, ha, here comes another. Ha, but keep faith ha, in God. God. He's a God of his word. For God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent or change in mind. Has he not said it? Will he not do it? Has he not spoken? Will he not make it good? The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Go ahead and praise him right there at home. Go ahead and bless him because faith has brought you this far and your faith is going to lead you on. Did you hear what I'm saying? Your faith is going to get you out. Your faith will unlock prison doors. Your faith will turn a storm into a calm. Yes, your face will turn poverty into prosperity, sickness into healing, and even death into life. Whatever you do, keep the faith. Give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Keep the faith. I can't overemphasize enough, beloved. That is, your faith is the only commodity that's going to cause you to endure in these troublesome times. You will discover 
It's your sheer belief in God. It's your unwavering confidence in God that's going to see you through this that you're presently going through and even that which is coming. What shall we say to these things if God be for us? Who can be against us? Let me pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the power of your word. I thank you because it is our faith. The faith that you taught us through your word. For we understand that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. I pray for those under the sound of my voice that they might endure affliction be able to say as the Apostle Paul I am ready to be offered up for the time of my departure is at hand I have fought a good fight finished my course I have kept the faith bless our prayer every home every family and every individual under the sound of my voice I believe it it is so, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless your hearts today. I, I thank God for the power of his word and the presence of his anointing that I sense and feel even right now. And I pray you as well have been blessed by the spoken word. I'm going to ask that those of you who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardoning of sin, do this one thing right now. You might not have ever had to do it before, but I want you to appropriate. All that's simply saying is put faith in action. That's right. Say to an invisible God that you can't see, I believe that you are and that you're willing to help me. So I invite invite you into my life today. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I repent. I change my mind about sin and all worldliness. And I accept the sacrifice of your shed blood for me. And I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that You've been raised from the dead by the power of God the Father. And I believe right now you are bringing me out of the kingdom of darkness and you're translating me into the kingdom of your dear son. You'll do just what you say. And as soon as you have opportunity to be obedient to what you've confessed, receive the Lord and take him on by baptism. He'll fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. I believe God for you. It's done in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless each and every one of you, my Heavenly Father's children. I'm asking that if you've been blessed by the word today, that you seed into that word, that you sow into that word, and God will cause an abundant harvest to be your portion. To the worshipers of Kingdom Cathedral, members in particular, I challenge you to believe God. Honor him with your tithe and offering. Bless him and he'll bless you more than you ever expected. To all of our cyber congregation, thank you so much for your support and continue to do the same. In fact, would you sow a generous seed today? Thank you. We've already received from our out-of-town constituents love and, and gifts and encouragement. Continue to be a blessing, and God will bless you abundantly. In just a moment, our announcer is going to share with you how to give.
But I want you to know the only way you're going to be blessed in this season is that you have got to keep the faith. God bless you, and thanks for viewing. Would you consider partnering with us with a financial contribution? We have three ways that you can give. Cash app, dollar sign, Kingdom Cathedral VA, or you can go to our website, www.kingdomcathedral.org. And the third way, you can write us, Kingdom Cathedral, 3820 Stone Shore Road, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23452.